Alright, alright, so we finally have a really good upgrade. Adobe just released the M1 native version of After Effects and I gotta say, this is a huge upgrade and one that we really needed. So in today's video I will make some tests to see how this version performs on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro and I will also compare it with the same version but running through Rosetta instead of the M1 chip. The configuration I'm using is the MacBook Pro 2021 with the M1 Pro chip, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 GB of RAM memory and 1 TB of SSD storage. Regarding the version of After Effects, I'm using the latest version which is the version 22.3, the first version which is officially M1 native. I will test 5 projects, the first one will contain lots of 3D graphic elements, the second one will be visual effects, the third one will be a 3D workspace using the Cinema 4D renderer, the fourth one will be a video with a grain removal effect and the fifth one will be rotoscoping. So a couple of notes before starting out, one, this is not a benchmark, I will not use any third party software to analyze the performance or anything like that, I'll be using just some personal projects where we're gonna test the RAM preview for half and full resolution and also the render time. Two, I want you to keep in mind that I will have all the time this floating dock right here which is basically the CPU core usage, so as you can see there are 10 bars which are the 10 CPU cores and you'll notice that as I start to use After Effects all these cores will be used. Along with this I will also keep the info panel on the screen and you can also take a look at this to see how many frames are being rendered simultaneously due to the multi-frame rendering feature. And the last note is just an advice regarding this version, I wouldn't recommend to upgrade just yet because it's very buggy, I got lots of crashes so it's not a very stable version for now. Alright, so let's start with this first project and in this one I have lots of 3D layers, some text animations, uh, some lights, a 3D camera and so on. I will show you all my layers and also all the effects applied. So first of all I have this background layer with two gradient ramp effects. Then I have the same background layer but for this one I've also added a radial blur effect and you can see it right there. Then I have a vignette effect, I have some bubbles, so these bubbles right here in the, in the middle. Then I have my first shape which is this blue shape and for this one I have some effects applied and the first one is actually part of a plugin called the shade thrower. So all these effects are actually part of the plugin, I didn't add this, so don't get intimidated by all of this. And if I disable this, you can see the shade on the shape. Alright, and then I have a light sweep effect, you can see it right there. I also have a glow effect, I have a radial shadow, which is a bit subtle but you can see it right here, and also an echo effect. So if I scrub the time a little bit, maybe you can see it better. So yeah, this one right here. All right, then I have three little stars. So if I select them, you can't even see them because they are very small. So this is the first one, the second one here and the third one. All right, and then I have a shadow layer, which is this one right here at the bottom. Alright, now let's go further, so this composition right here, it's just a text animation. Then I have another shape, which is this green one, it's basically the same shape as the first one, but with a different color. So this green one in the middle with another three stars and the shadow layer. And then the third shape, which is this pink shape right here, again with three stars and also a shadow layer. Alright, and on top of all these layers, I've also added a noise layer and this one contains a noise HLS effect. Then I have two lights, one ambient light and one parallel light and also a camera for some 3D, for some 3D effects. So before, uh, before starting to preview this, I want to clear all the frames, all the cached frames because as you can see, this portion of the of the composition is already rendered so let's go to edit purge all memory and disk cache and let's clear this okay let's go to start and i wanted to keep in mind that i have the resolution set to half so let's press play to see how it goes so a couple of things to note here 
you can see all the 10 cores being used right now. Again, this is a feature implemented with After Effects 2022, so it's not specific to the M1 chip, but still, it's nice to see this improvement. Alright, and the M1 version is done. It took about 22 seconds to run preview this video. Let's now wait for the other video to finish, but I'm going to speed up this part a little bit so we don't have to wait that much time. Also, you can use the L key on your keyboard to skip 10 seconds of the video. Alright, and the other video is finished as well, it took about 38 seconds to finish, so we have a huge difference, apparently the M1 version took almost half the time to ramp with the video. Let's now try to full resolution, but again, let's go to edit, purge, and let's purge all memory in this cache. And let's see with full resolution how much time it takes to ramp preview all of this. If you look at the info panel, you can see this concurrent frame rendering. At this moment we have about 3 or 4 and this is basically the number of frames that are currently being rendered at the same time. So again, using all the cores, After Effects is now able to render multiple frames at once. And the M1 version is done, we have 1 minute and 58 seconds, let's now wait for the other video to finish. Alright, the Rosetta version video is done, we have 2 minutes and 2 seconds, so only 4 seconds difference between the two videos on full resolution. Alright, now let's test some visual effects. So for this test I have this day scene and I'm going to transform it into a night scene. So if I enable all of this, you can see that I now have a night scene and I can also scrub through timeline just fine. By the way, I'm on half resolution, so maybe keep in mind that. Alright, and now I'm going to disable all these layers and I'm going to show you each level individually to see what effects I have applied. So, the first layer is just the color grade. Uh, I've used Lumetri color effect to darken up the scene. I have then a 3D camera used for tracking and stabilization. Then I have a light layer for this street light to which I applied a glow effect. I then have this right lamp layer. Again, I've applied the glow effect. I have another lamp layer. Then another one, which is this big light. And for this one, I have applied the gradient ramp effect. I also have another big light. Then we have some particles. We then have another light right here. Then let's go a little bit further. And now I have some window lights, then again another window light, another window light with some glow effects, another window light, and then again some particles, and on top of all the layers I have this color grading effect. So again, before starting, uh, before starting the RAM preview, let's just clear all the memory and this cache. Alright, so let's see how it goes. And this time we have a very huge difference apparently. The M1 version video finished in about 13 seconds, while the Rosetta version finished in 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Let's also change this to full resolution. Again, let's clear all the cache just in case. And let's see how it goes on full resolution. So we have 44 seconds for the Emo version video and 3 minutes and 55 seconds for the Rosetta video. Again, impressive difference between the two videos. Alright, so for this example I'm going to test some 3D elements and for this one, as you can see here, I'm using the Cinema 4D renderer and this is because I wanted to extrude the elements. So as you can see I have this, uh, this ground layer extruded and also these text layers. So if I go here to this ground layer, geometry option, you can see that I can extrude this more. It's not the smoothest, but it can work just fine. By the way, I'm on full resolution right now. So I also have some lights as you can see and also this camera. And let's say I want to make some adjustments, so I take this orbiting tool and 
you can see how I move around. It's not the smoothest experience, but After Effects was never really good with 3D environments, especially with this one when I'm using the Cinema 4D renderer. Maybe if I change this to half resolution, it's going to be much better. Yeah, so half resolution is definitely better. It can work just fine. And let's now ramp preview this, but again, let's clear all memory on this cache. So let's just press play and let's see how it goes. And as I said before, this version is very buggy, so let's try again. Alright, and the demo video finished in 36 seconds, while the Rosetta one finished in 47 seconds. So about a 30% increase on the native chip. And let's now try with full resolution. Again, let's purge all memory in this cache. And let's see how much time it takes. Alright, we have 1 minute and 13 seconds for the Amon version and 1 minute and 39 seconds for the Rosetta version. Again, not a huge difference. Alright, and in this example I'm going to use a remove grain effect and let's see how much time it takes to run preview this. So I'm now on full resolution. And we have a really huge difference on this Full HD video, only 1 minute and 51 seconds for the Emod version and 5 minutes and 13 seconds for the Rosetta version. And for this last example I'm going to use the Roto brush to see how it goes. So let's take the Roto brush and let's paint over this lady. Alright, and now I'm going to press play and let the roto brush do its thing and even if it goes wrong and won't select properly, I won't stop it because I just want to see how fast it goes and not how well it selects this object. And as you can see, the Amon version is really fast, this is real time, I'm not speeding up the video right now. I will let it run like this for a couple of seconds more and then I will speed up the video again. So we have 1 minute and 8 seconds for the Amon version and 4 minutes and 18 seconds for the Rosetta version. The difference on this one is again astounding. Anyway, let's now try to freeze the frames. So let's see how much time it takes. So I almost thought that the Rosetta version was faster than the M1 but I realized when I was editing the video that the freeze frame option was actually freezing the Roto brush in combination with the Refine Edge tool. So this test is a bit unfair because in the other video I used only Roto brush without the Refine Edge option so sorry about that. Alright so I've added here at the render queue every project uh, I've shown you before and let's try to render this to see how much time it takes. And this, ladies and gentlemen, it's the power of the M1, just look at the results. For the first video we have 1 minute and 10 seconds for the M1 version and 2 minutes and 5 seconds for the Rosetta one. For the second video we have 37 seconds for the M1 and 3 minutes and 59 seconds for the Rosetta. For the third video we actually have just 2 seconds for the M1 and 1 minute and 41 seconds for the Rosetta. And for the fourth video we have 5 seconds for the M1 and 3 minutes and 24 seconds for the Rosetta. Alright, so this was the testing for the After Effects M1 native version, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and talk to you in the next video.